Hi, my name is Ron Griffin for ArtificialAnimation.com and in this Monday tutorial we'll be taking a look at how to properly color correct footage um, from any camera, any game, anything like that. So I want to go ahead and uh, get it out of the way just in the start here of the tutorial that this is not something fancy. Um, this is not color enhancement. There's a huge misconception when it comes to the term color correcting. Um, and what it is, is it's actually very technical, um, or it's not very technical, it's not complicated or anything like that. It's just that when I say technical, I mean it relies on the different channels and it relies on equalizing all the colors to produce a nice image. So to do this, we're going to use After Effects. I'm using After Effects CS6. You can use uh, any version uh, as long as it comes with Color Finesse 3. Um, and the reason I want you to use Color Finesse 3 is because it's really the only thing within After Effects that has the proper scopes and the waveform monitors that we'll be using. So without further ado, let's open After Effects and uh, you can see I have a composition here. I have some footage out of the Canon 550D. What's important to note here is if I switch off the effects, we can see that this is shot in a flat picture style. So if you are a game related viewer, then you don't need to worry about what I'm about to say. But if you are a DSLR user or you're recording footage, uh, remember to always shoot with the flattest style you can. Um, and if you're using a Canon camera, there is a bunch of um, you know uh, color presets and styles and stuff. Uh, the most commonly used is the Cinetech, um, I think it's called. It's basically a super flat uh, format and uh, it gets you the best sort of dynamic range out of the camera. So you can go in post later like we are now and fix up some stuff. So the first thing you want to do is get your footage, drag it into the make new comp button. And now I've got my footage here. I'm just going to quickly, quickly size it up just so I know what I'm working with. Okay, and we're going to take the Color Finesse 3 plugin. So if I go to the effects and presets and I search Color Finesse, you'll see the synthetic aperture Color Finesse 3 um, sort of plugin here. I'll just drag that onto the clip. What's important to note is that uh, if you have pirated uh, After Effects, and I know probably most of you will, I mean, I'm not that naive, um, then you're going to run into some problems. And if you do, you should probably just uh, resort to your parting uh, resources and, you know, just try and get it working because this is, this is sort of the best way you can do it in After Effects uh, without moving on to another program. However, if you bought it, kudos uh, to you. You should find your serial on the, uh, on the box or in your email confirmation. And you'll be able to put that into Color Finesse 3 if it asks you for one. If you don't have one at all, then again, it's a parting problem, um, you know, before you post in the comments saying, hey, why can't I see that? Anyway, you want to click the full interface button and this will launch Color Finesse 3. Um, and here is the program itself. So it's sort of an external little uh, piece to After Effects. It's a, it's, it's a separate program, but it, it's directly linked to After Effects. So, you can see here we've got the combo view and this is our RGB monitor. We've got some luminance stuff going on. We've got the uh, curves and uh, we've got a scope. So if you look on the left here, um, we can click on the RGB waveform and this is the monitor we're going to be paying the most attention to. Also the histograms, we're going to be paying attention to that as well. So our objective here is to get these red, green and blue channels um, more alike. And right now you can see there's, there's less blue um, the green and red is is okay, but there's more green or there's more red there. Sorry, than there is green. You can see at the 20 bar, we're we're peeking out just you know a few places, while the red is already way up here. And you can see up in the high uh, hundreds, and everything is just flat. And that's the the dynamic range of the camera physically can't do anything. It just stops there. So how do we change this? Well, we're going to use the tools on the left here. We've got HSL which is hue, saturation, and luminance, or some people call it luminance, some people call it lightness. Um, it's really, it really doesn't matter. It's HSL, RGB, you got CMY, um, CMYK formats and stuff like that. But we'll be focusing on RGB. So if we um, just look in the RGB, we've got a few different tools. We can use these, or we can just use the curves, which is, if you've been using any of these programs, um, even Photoshop, you'll probably be familiar with curves. So if we just check the curves button, that means it's active, RGB, okay. Now we're gonna start correcting these channels. So first thing we're gonna do is take the red and if you just grab the bottom piece here, we can 
pull the whole the whole red channel and this can you know compress it or whatever but that's not what we want to do we want to level off the red a bit just so it's sort of similar to the green so we're just going to grab it um, we're just going to play around until we've sort of dropped these levels down and you can see it's already uh, sort of dipped below so we're just going to pull it up a bit and um, all we're going to try and do is equalize this so we're, we're looking pretty good um, what we can do is work on the upper bits here just pull them down okay so moving over to the green actually we'll skip green for now we'll, we'll focus on the blue because the blue is um, a big part of the problem here uh, we need a lot more blue so we're just gonna go ahead and just boost that straight away I want to be careful we don't want to boost it too much and uh, give ourselves a tint um, since this is shot in flat we're just gonna equal out the um, the curves we're going to in induce some contrast into the shot because it's so flat it needs that contrast so we're just going to control all of them at once just control the master basically okay I'm um, back to adjusting the blue and you can see the whole point of this is the different parts of the um, the curve control different midtones, highlights, stuff like that. So you can see we're playing around with the top piece and it's moving the top piece. Another thing I didn't mention is you can click play here, and if we do click play, um, we can actually see this update right in front of us, which is actually really, really good. Okay, so. Got some stuff going on here just trying to get a spot where there's some interesting light so we can get a good idea of um, uh, the different levels we'll be encountering as soon as there's light in the scene these values will change so okay so we've got a good place uh, for light and um, we're just going to further inspect our uh, waveform here and you can see the values have changed quite a bit so again we're just going to work on correcting it and just sort of just trying our best to line everything up um, that's all we can try and do there are scientific sort of methods to do this um, you know you can export it and import it into Photoshop and uh, you can control all the RGB values separately there um, but what I've found is this works the best especially for DSLR footage so at this point we're looking okay we're just trying our best to equalize and we can keep an eye on these bars just to see how much there is of everything in each um, sort of field so and once we're done with this we're going to be able to see how much of a difference it is to our scene and the important thing to remember is um, the sort of creative color enhancements that's most commonly uh, misconceived to be color correction should be done after the, the scene is color balanced. So after we've done this process, it means that the colors are in balance, it is corrected, it is, uh, you know, sort of uniform, and then we can get cracking with some more creative adjustments. So you, you like I said, you want to play around with this, and this to me looks pretty much done. Um, I've gotten my colors corrected and I've induced some contrast and so let's just hit OK and we'll go back out here. So if we switch the color finesse on off you can see immediately what's happened here is we've removed a lot of that red and this only becomes really apparent once we take a look at it. We can also take a look inside the interface by clicking source. You can see we've removed that red um, and balance the colors out. We've got nice softer tones in the skin and uh, it just looks a lot nicer and this is because if you look at our source we, we had a lot of red we had you know a decent amount of green but our blue was lacking and here you can see we have balanced it out and it just looks a lot better so at the end of the day you really want to do this before you go ahead and do anything wild when it comes to your colors so I hope you learned something from this um, and before I end the tutorial I just 
really quickly want to show you sort of a creative example. If you're working with 3D stuff a lot, um, and you know you're you're sort of wondering how does this apply to you, uh, you should you should sort of pick up in the process of, of 3D stuff that, you know, the renders might not necessarily look good and they might not necessarily match your scene. And when I say look good, I mean in terms of color. Um, these bullets versus the background, it doesn't seem completely unified. There, there needs to be some work um, to actually match up the colors. So those are things to keep in mind that when you're working with 3D stuff, there's a lot of different layers involved. And uh, I'll just show you a quick uh, sort of creative color adjustment I have here is Magic Ball Looks. And if I switch that off, you can immediately see, once it's done ramp breathing, um, that uh, our scene is a lot more flat. and It doesn't have uh, as much appeal to it. But still, the bullets could use some work to sort of integrate them properly into the scene. Anyway, I hope you learned something from this tutorial. Um, I hope that you better understand what the proper process of color grading and color correcting is. Um, and uh, from, from here on, you can sort of apply whatever sort of style you want. If you're going for a dark sort of movie, you know, you can put some blue tint on there. If you're going for the Hollywood stuff, you know, induce a lot of orange and induce a lot of blue at the same time. Orange skin tones versus blue background, that's instant Hollywood. Um, and so that's, you know, stuff to look into. But I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I hope you learned something. Any questions whatsoever, just send me a message or leave me a comment. Um, if you like the video, please do subscribe. I put out weekly tutorials. And uh, if you like the video, of course, like the video. Uh, that helps me get up ranked with the other YouTube videos there since YouTube system is uh, completely revamped now. The likes is what will get me um, sort of listed better. So thanks for watching again, and I'll see you next week.